go item by item by item, it certainly doesn't seem like a very friendly way to start trade negotiations. Well, and, and certainly um, from a political perspective, so you have Senator Rubio amongst others. Um, I mean, th there has become on both sides of the aisle now, I think, a bipartisan disillusionment with China. And so what you have here is you have that political disillusionment on the one hand, um, and you have policymakers that are trying to have a more comprehensive, complete deal getting done. You have actually corporations that are very interested in long-term planning. And, but you have market participants, as was just suggested, that are concerned about the volatility in the markets between getting from here to there. So I think that's exactly what you're going to have for some period of time. You're going to have continued volatility in the markets if you believe this is not going to get resolved anytime soon, which it sounds like um, uh, both of us agree is not going to happen. Mm, definitely. Alan, could we find mm -hmm. ourselves uh, talking about these trade negotiations and seeing that all these various issues that you're talking about, that we're talking about here on set, had become um, negotiation chips? I don't believe that they will be, especially going forward. And one reason is, I think that because of President Trump's political troubles, he has a stronger interest in reaching some kind of a nerve-calming mini-deal as it's been called, than he had before. I think once that Mueller report was out of the way and we all thought that the impeachment threat was basically gone, he had a much freer hand. His hand is now no longer nearly so free. And I think it's really quite clear that in terms of these larger structural issues, intellectual property theft, illegal subsidies, technology extortion, the Chinese are in absolutely no mood to accommodate him and I think are counting on waiting him out. And, and waiting out the 2020 election in particular. And kicking the can down the road, to Alan's point, would be good for the Chinese as well. Mm -hmm. So if they actually get some delay on these upcoming tariffs, that will buy Which you them expect. some time. You seem to expect. The, 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 the ones that are supposed to go in on the 15th won't? Well, it's, it's hard to expect anything, right? The negotiating <laughs> strategy has been a bit that's, that's confusing, true. if not <laughs> incoherent. What I would say is I think it is... There is zero percent, Tyler, that this gets resolved in a comprehensive way over this, these course of these meetings. Mm -hmm. Zero. So now your other choice is we're going to proceed along the path that has already been described, which is increasing tariffs next Tuesday and then a new batch to come in on December 15th. I believe there's a decent chance that we will get in, make incremental progress that allows them to come up with some political victory. And as part of that, I might imagine a delay or a reward for this Chinese negotiating team coming out All of right. this meeting with the president uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, which I think both sides would view right. positively. All right, we have to leave it.